Hey everyone, I'm here at <clears throat> Chateau Saint-Michel in uh, Woodenville, Washington. This isn't far away from where I grew up. In fact, I used to walk the grounds of Chateau Saint-Michel when I was about that tall. You know, I was brought out here by Martha Pettigrew a lot, actually, the more I think about it. I'm not sure why. Um, actually, I kind of know. I think there was times where when um, those who are unfamiliar with my story, James, who was in that neighborhood back in Bothell, was trying to do some things that were a little bit shady or wanted to get away with some things that I might talk about. So he would get Martha to take me out. And when, sometimes, you know, she would take me to this place and we'd walk around the winery grounds for a while. But it's made me wonder as I've been kind of like reviewing history and going through all these areas where our family's been, why are we always close to these wineries? Why are these the places where they like to hang out? Um, thing about Martha was, and James for that matter, where they were both people that were pretty comfortable with giving me alcohol when I was a little kid. Uh, Martha would give me red wine pretty frequently and James was always giving me beer. I mean, I, I knew what different kinds of beer tasted like and different kinds of wine tasted like before I was 10 years old. I could actually tell by flavor and look. You know, I knew different brands. Even when I was five, I knew what different beers tasted like. I knew the difference between Budweiser and Rainier. That's kind of some strange um, information or things for a kid five years old to even have or know about. It's one thing to have tasted beer, but it's a whole nother thing to be able to actually be able to tell the difference between different kinds. But that was the level of knowledge that I had at that, that age. But what's tripping me out about revisiting some of these areas, because this isn't far away from where Queensgate, you know, and Bothell and all that is. It's just a few miles up the road there. And this isn't far from where our family lived. And so this was just one of those places that was convenient to go even when I was a kid. They've expanded it significantly since then. It has a lot of like concert venues and things like that. But yeah, what made this even stranger to me was I did a story out in Patterson, okay, which is a little town out in eastern Washington. And then and in front of it, I talked about some of the connections to the wineries, the Hanford Nuclear Reservation, underground access, because that's where I'm kind of getting to with this. I think the reason why the winery economy has expanded to such a degree is it's because it's also acting as like access to underground tunnels and access to underground facilities, as well as routes, you know, high speed routes. And... I frequently find like a winery that has a data set that matches something in Eastern Washington, not just that they're affiliated wineries, but for example, out here, there's like these Patterson wineries. And then if you go out to Patterson, Washington, a very small town where there's almost no population, there are, are in fact wineries in Patterson. And I know there's underground access out in Patterson, Washington. It's just a town nobody talks about and it's completely off the radar. But you'll find a nearly imp as impressive of a facility as this one here, eh, not quite as vast, but it's big, out in Patterson. And again, it's kind of uh, just off the, the Columbia River near the Washington-Oregon border. So when I was looking into the Love Family Cult thing, I've also observed with them frequently, they'll have something that they have an interest in. It's up in like China Bend near the Canadian border, but then the name of that winery matches something that I'm familiar with that matches something in Eastern Washington. What I'm trying to suggest to you folks is, is that going back decades, there's people that have been doing like coring and boring the earth underground, these mafia families that are in charge of it, and that creates tunnels and that creates routes. And then those routes are kept a secret. And one of the ways that those speakeasies are kept a secret is through the wineries, through the wineries and the nuclear reservation. And, it, and it's both sides of the mountains. This is Western Washington and Eastern Washington. You're gonna find the same things that there's former Mike, Nike missile silos that are oftentimes underneath the wineries or within very close proximity to the wineries. All right, so if there's Nike or Titan or Minuteman or other types of missile silos that have deep underground bases and facilities that are close to wineries frequently, well, wouldn't that eventually, if you're just a sensible person, wouldn't you eventually start to draw the conclusion that those facilities are being used for something else, especially like the Arete Vineyard out in Eastern Washington? Here's where the plot thickens. Chateau Saint-Michel is connected to the Columbia wineries 
and that winery out there in Patterson that I visited on my last, uh, well, like a few years ago when I did some stories from there, I noticed that um, that's the same winery that for some strange reason, my father, who worked as the Department of Energy's human resources manager, my father went to go interview for a job out there to do human resources or something to that function about a decade ago. I remember because I was staying with my folks when it happened. And I remember thinking, you are like running a bunch of wineries or being in charge of anything at a bunch of wineries? That just seems kind of strange, you know? He's not a guy that's been into the wine economy or into wineries, my father. But there he was applying for a job at those Columbia, um, I believe it was Columbia State's wineries or whatever. I, I can't remember what the name of it is, but exactly. But it's Columbia, the one connected to Chateau Saint-Michel. They all use that font that you see on that sign up there, if you can see that off, if you have a high definition television. So, But the brands will all use that. So it's just one of those weird full circle things that, you know, I'm a kid at that age, we're coming out here, my grandmother's taking me to this winery. Then I, I grow up, we go to the Eastern Washington again, we're next to the same affiliated wineries. And there always seems to be a close family connection or an interest in these wineries, even though like, I don't really know a lot of wine drinkers within my immediate family or in, or elsewhere, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure they're there, but I don't know. This just has me thinking about what's going on underneath all this. Everywhere.